over this You look like faded and mix, I get a load of this Yo, what's going on? It's your boy King J. If you don't know me, I make Tekken content. I also make fighting game content as well. I am on the future game show to help you get up to speed with the top five characters that you should use if you're starting out with Tekken 8. Let's go. But before we get into the best characters for beginners, let me run through some general tips you need to know very quickly. So there's different limbs in Tekken, so left punch is one, right punch is two, left kick is three, right kick is four. So left punch would be square on the PlayStation, right punch would be triangle, left kick will be X, right kick will be circle. If you press left punch and left kick, that will be grab. If you press right punch and right kick, that will be another generic grab. The heat system. When your character goes in heat, it enhances their abilities and some of their moves. How to get into heat? is by pressing R1 or 2 plus 3, which is right punch, left kick together. You can enter it by using heat engager. So some moves, if you hit successfully, they will go into heat. Or you could do heat burst, which if they're grounded, it will basically do plus frames. So you would have advantage even if they block it. So those are the two ways you can get into heat. You can also cancel it by pressing the heat button and pressing back back. While you're in heat, you get access to another two things. One of them is called heat dash. So with heat dash, you would have to use a heat engager move and hold forward. When you do that, your character will then run forward and then you can do something as a follow up. So you would either do this in a combo or you would either do this with the character standing. And if it successfully hits and they're running, you can then continue on the combo. Heat smash is the ultimate attack in heat. So every character has it. Some have highs, mids, and some of them have low moves. If blocked, then you might be at disadvantage depending on what character you're choosing. The last general tip I would like to give is don't get disheartened. Fine games can be complicated, but I'm about to make it easy for you by telling you which characters and easy combos to start off with. So don't panic. I'll give Kazuya a nice smack in the face. So the first character is Asuka. So Asuka is a very good all around character. She could be defensive. Being aggressive might be a bit difficult for her, but she has a range of tools. So she has a punch parry and a kick parry as well. She has good neutral skip tools. Now, what I mean by neutral skip is she can come from mid range and come quite close to your opponent, or she can kind of like be even more further. You know, she has a lot of forward forward moves and the forward forward moves make her go close to the opponent. Neutral skip is all about controlling space. And in this game, you're gonna need to control space and be confident to throw out moves. And I feel like Asuka's pretty good at throwing out moves and not being so punishable. She has decent punishment in the Tekken 8 game and forward to being a good whiff punisher launcher. So if you see someone throw out a move, you can punish that by just doing forward two and forward two covers a lot of range. She has a few good command grabs that you can mix up the opponent with. The reason why Asuka is easy is because she doesn't have no stances so all you have to work on is just the selected moves you want to use and just the throws. Alright moving on to my main character Leroy. So Leroy has an easy move set. There's not really much to think about with this character as he has a good access to higher moves and low moves and he has parries as well but parries you have to be careful about because you can get thrown out of parries and they are unbreakable. He has good standing and while standing punishment. He excels in close range fighting, struggles with mid to long range distance, but if you're close range with Leroy, yeah, you could mix them up very heavily. He also has a very unique cane tool. He can use this once per match and they could vary from the low or the mid move. So there's two moves to it. You can either choose the low one and that gives a launcher or the mid that gives a launcher as well. But bear in mind, you can only use it once per match. Hermit is his only stance, but it's very easy to get used to after a couple of matches. He has a few moves out of the Hermit stance, but it's pretty simple. Leroy has one command grab and he has degenerate grabs, which is like one plus three and two plus four. Has a sabaki which deflects punches and kicks. Be careful as it does not deflect weapons, elbows, knees and projectiles. However, his parry does. Leroy can be played both defensive and offensive with his toolset. So with offensive playstyle, you can mix up with lows, mids and high attacks. 
With defensive, you can use parry, sabaki, his infamous 1 plus 2 to fish for counter hit and gain big damage in a combo. Claudio is another all-rounder. Claudio doesn't have a stance. He has something very unique that enhances his moves. He has moves that give a unique power-up called Starburst. Some of these moves will be enhanced while his glove is glowing. Has a bunch of good mid moves to keep your opponent from ducking. Running 2 does tons of damage and would make your opponent want to duck. You can mix that up with forward forward 4 which is the running knee. The aim here with Claudio is to trick your opponent into ducking and then hitting them with mids when they try to duck. Claudio has no stance moves making him the perfect beginner character to not scramble your brain. Feng Wei is another beginner character but he has a few intermediate stuff like using quarter circle forward motions and he has a stance which is called Kempo. Feng has annoying pokes such as down forward 1, down back 3, side step 4, side step 1 plus 2 and back 4. These are a mix of mids, highs and lows. A lot of these moves that he has is pretty good. Back 1 is a good move as well for counter hit. Back three is his new move where he steps in and knees you in your belly. I think this is going to be very useful in matches because it is heavily on plus if you block it. I think Feng is a very quick character in Tekken 8. Pretty easy to get used to and has intermediate stuff you can learn along the way. But if you want to just get straight into it, he has the food moves that I said and back one plus two as well for shoulder bar. But yeah, Feng is a very good character for trying to play Tekken 8 as a beginner. Jack 8 is one of the biggest characters in the game. Usually in fighting games, the big characters have a range of command grabs. This doesn't shy away from Jack. Jack has a bunch of command grabs that you will get used to and trick your opponent with and they do damage as well. It ranges from the tombstone, from throwing you up in the air and doing a juggle to a backbreaker. He has, he has a bunch of throws. But on top of that, he also has a bunch of good tools to annoy your opponent. Down back one is a very annoying low punch move, which is considered a poke, it's, but it's quick and very hard to see. 4 4 one covers distance on the screen and stops you from wanting to duck. Remember what I told you about controlling space in this game is very crucial. 4 4 one is definitely going to be that move. Not only that, he has a bunch of other moves as well because his arms has long reach. Very, very strong character. He has 4 4 one plus 2, which is a launcher that gives Jack access to big damage. On top of that, he has a stance called Gamma Hal. He has a homing mid. If you don't know what a homing is, homing means that it tracks both ways. And having a homing mid is crucial in this game because it stops people from wanting to sidestep left or right. On top of that, Jack has other tools as well. So like he has the, uh, down back two. So if he does down back two to your opponent, it will be confused on what to do because it's a low move, but it's crazy. Jack, Jack has a bunch of tools. Also as well in Gamma Hal, he has one plus two throw. But he cannot change the throw. So if you see Jack in Gamma Hall and he does 1 plus 2 throw, you could break it with 1 plus 2 as well. So yeah, that's one thing to pay attention to. But yeah, Jack is definitely very beginner friendly. He has some intermediate stuff as well. And you're going to have to learn how to defend because he doesn't really have that much good get off me tools. But he is a very strong character. Okay, so I've listed the five characters that I think you should use if you are starting out. Tekken 8 as a beginner. I've been your boy King J. Thank you Future Game Show for having me on. If you have any tips or tricks to help beginners, make sure you like leave it in the comment section down below and also make sure to leave a subscription to Future Game Show as well. Other than that, take it easy. Peace.